Hello everyone, and welcome back to my channel. My name is Harry Wolf. We talk about code around here. Today, we're talking about this new thing from GitHub. You know what GitHub is, right? That little website that everyone uses to host all their code. They had like a GitHub conference earlier this year, and one of the really, really cool features they announced at that time was this thing called uh, Code Spaces. And their tagline for it was the instant dev environment. And the short description of what it does, uh, at least from what I can tell from the conference, is that it essentially puts VS Code in the cloud, such that you can do all your coding in the browser, which sounds like the dream, because might as well dog food that entirely. I think implementation-wise, it actually uses like a container. Like there is some server somewhere that's actually running the software and then it's just servicing it into the browser for you. But as far as I'm concerned, it's just the browser. So works for me. Uh, let me show you an email that I got two days ago. So two days ago, I'm sitting at my computer, completely forgotten about code spaces until I check my email. And lo and behold, I get this really exciting email that I am in the Code Spaces beta. <sighs> Thrilling. Uh, I was off, I'm off the wait list and I'm ready to start using it. And it took everything in my power not to start playing with Code Spaces right away. Uh, Cause I've been very excited about this idea of being able to code without a desktop operating system at all. But I restrained myself cause I wanted to share this journey of exploration, this new toy with you, faithful watcher. So you get to travel along my journeys of joy and excitement while we get to play with code spaces for the first time. Uh, learn more developing online with code spaces uh, about billing for code spaces. How dare you? What? When code spaces become generally available, you will be billed for storage and compute usage. How could you, GitHub, nay, Microsoft, just give me this for free? Uh, I'm sure you can uh, carry the load of that. Uh, when it's generally available, you'll be billed for storage and compute usage. So here's the tiers. So the basic tier is 80.085 cents an hour, which doesn't seem like that much, but let's say I code uh, four hours a day times seven days a week times 30 days in a month. That's 840 hours. Uh, so 840 times 0 0.085 is $71. Uh, that's not cheap. Um, I mean, if my company pays for it, that's cheap for a company. But personally, I'm not going to pay $70 a month to use VS Code in the cloud when I can just use it on my Mac, so uh, thanks. <laughs> um, good to know though, so you don't get too addicted to it before you have to start paying for it. How do I use this thing? If I click a link somewhere, uh, where's GitHub Spaces? Give me a button. You can see every code space owned by a user account at github.com. Ah, no active code spaces. So let's create my first code space and choose a repository. Let's use this one, which is a fun little side project I'm working on that I'll give you a little sneak peek here. When I'm, when I'm done, I'll talk more about it, but for now, I'll just use that as our uh, guinea pig. And here we go. The code space is being created. Ooh, ooh, it's starting up. Nice little flashing Facebook-like loading indicator. Uh, initializing the code space. Uh, somehow this is actually relaxing to stare at. Hmm. This is similar to npm install, but on a whole nother level because it's actually instant. Some server somewhere just got woken up from a very uh, sweet. Ne Ooh, what's happening? Ooh. Ooh. This is fancy. Mm. Mm. This uh, looks like VS Code. <laughs> in the browser. Mm, okay, okay. Uh, help VS Code by allowing to collect usage data. You want to spy on me? Sure, whatever. 
see progress logs, initializing the code space. A lot of words happening here that make no sense to me. Great. Uh, this is um, this is VS Code in the browser, uh, as promised, I guess. I can click around, things work here. Uh, what's this button do? This takes me to the repo, okay. Great, I have to connect again. Okay, that wasn't too slow. That was pretty fast. Not too bad at all. And it's saving my state where I was before, that's pretty cool. And what's this button do? Ah, clever. So this is essentially the menu that you'd have on top of your screen, in this handy dandy little sidebar button here. Uh, Close, edit, selection, okay. Uh, yeah, this just looks like um, VS Code. I don't really know what I expected otherwise. I have a terminal here, which is cool. Um, that's the repo. Uh, print working directory, uh, CD to the root, my list. Ah, look at that. It is a Linux computer. If you get that reference, um, I'm wondering if I can kind of read these things. Code spaces. Mm -hmm. CD code space. What? Oh, that's the user, right? Dir. Um, if I go to like bar, I get access there. This is this is a whole thing. That's wild. Uh, let's go back home. CD workspace, list, CD, and that's the uh, repo. Hmm, look at that. Everything that I expect I just have there. Uh, the files are here as expected. I'm gonna do Command W to close the file, and I close the window. Oh, second time doing that. <laughs> I guess the, I guess not all keyboard shortcuts work as I'm used to, because Command W closes a window in Chrome, it closes a tab in VS Code, but it's kind of overloaded. Command J. Still works as expected. The app is cute. Uh, yeah. Oh, here we go. So uh, this is what's interesting. You can see how this is um, the code space itself. Uh, your actual code spaces is actually a thing built into uh, VS Code, where you can actually make some server somewhere and actually connect your VS Code, your local VS Code editor, to that remote container instance. I think Azure has had this for a while. Seems like GitHub Code Spaces is kind of like packing up all these different pieces into one easily to use thing together. Live session share, that is fancy. Um, but this is a whole package feature to make it easy for people to just get up and go. Ah, look at this. Packages to install. I want ESLint. <laughs> the hell does the reload mean? <laughs> Literally reload. Why is that surprising? Uh, <laughs> that is awesome. Um, let's go into a file here. Uh, let's go into pages. Let's go into, which is installed locally if you trust. Yes, I trust allow. You can use that. Go to the about file here. Um, I wonder if I were to do yarn dev, what happens if I try to spin up? Oh, that is clever. Look at that. My local server and port is being open in browser. Oh, maybe it's not too clever. Never mind. Oh, it's kind of, what? What? That didn't fully work. Um, show tunnels view. It tried to work. It did not fully work. I guess I can't fully get my repo to play with, because that'd be nice. What's this button do? Okay, good, great, not helpful. What does this button do? Okay, well, that doesn't really fully work. I'm not really sure how I could really, um, really test it. I can definitely code with it. Yeah, nothing's working. So that's fine. Well, that's why the cloud is hard. Let me disconnect. Kill things, cool. But uh, if I were to do another card, 
and do look at that hello sweet uh does this take any props look at this this is literally vs code in the browser so i have a ipad and if i attach a keyboard to it i essentially get vs code on my ipad uh not for free as you saw 70 dollars a month but if i'm in a pinch somewhere i just want to be able to spin things up easily this could be a thing to do it and i'm annoyed i can't connect to things publicly where is that settings stable version how dare you i don't want stability i want just things to just work with fear and wild abandon um this is working yeah this is it's literally just vs code in the browser like there's nothing really even magical about it there's not even much more to say about it uh it's just as you would expect um i actually don't like this view I like um inline view there you go yeah okay i can't do command w can you control w that's annoying how do you close a file edit view uh, let's do tab, do close, close tab, workspace is close workspace, view, close all editors, close editor, close editor. Yeah, so there's no shortcut for that, which is annoying because I use that command, control, command T, shift command T, <laughs> shift command T. Yeah, that's the whole browser. It's not just VS Code. And that's the problem. You have a window, like VS Code expects it to be the actual window on my Mac with a window because it's in the browser. I guess here's my trusted extensions. I don't even know what that means. Nope. Let's go more extensions here. Run into bug. Yeah, let's run into bug. I don't know what any of this stuff does. What just happened? I don't know what just happened. I don't know what that did. Um, let's try this again. Let's do yarn dev. Show tunnels view. Show me the tunnel of. This is localhost 3000 to there to there. Launching Chrome, I guess, localhost. Launching this thing is loading. Great. Love it. I love it. Yeah, this is exactly what I expect. So now if I go home, whoa, what just happened? Things are happening that I do not understand. Uh, die, die, die. Okay, my computer is frozen. Does this work? All right, good. Close you. So here I'm on the repo. And then if I go to code, open with code spaces, aha, so this is the code space that I was previously in. And you just kind of have it running. You could, I mean, this is a much powerful version of what GitHub now has on the pages where you can just edit a file if you want. This is literally VS Code entirely in the browser. Can I command click? I would hope so, it's just TypeScript. Not, how dare you? Not work as I expect. Oh, it's still initializing. Come on, get yourself together. This is really cool. All right, let's do this. Command click. Or, yep, that works as expected. But command click here. We're in node modules. I should turn this on locally. This is actually really nice to have, which I think I have it turned it off. I have it turned off in my local VS Code, but. Actually, it's kind of handy to have that to actually see where I am. Very easy to like navigate around. Interesting. So yeah, that is uh, that's that's GitHub Code Spaces. Um, is there more documentation to even chat about? Personalizing GitHub Code Spaces. It uses your dot files repo on GitHub to personalize every new code space that you create. So essentially you can, it clones your dot files repository to the code space environment. It looks for one of the following files to set the environment. Ah, so you want to have it install pretty much your default plugins 
you so yeah this has been in azure for a while right this is what this is visual studio supported it now it's visual studio code but if you want to have some default plugins i imagine you could use this for that um porting ports is what i want uh does this work i really wanted this to work this would have been the coolest part if it worked so i got it working i got it working where the website is actually being tunneled correctly um, how did I get it working? I deleted the code space and started it again. <laughs> uh, I turned it off and turned it back on again. So I'm sure there's some weird edge case that I encountered, but, um, things are working. So like if I go to about profile, so I go to the about here and I change this to be like, I got it working. What are you doing? Sure. What is that? Okay. I got it working and I save that. Uh, there it goes. Look at that. That is cool. Browser to browser. Um, I don't know why it wasn't working before, but it's definitely working now. Welcome to the future. I save that. And Next.js, just working. Welcome to the future. So uh, that's really cool that it's forwarding the local port on that server into the into a public URL that's accessible. I'm sure for as long as the... Um, uh, workspace is, is the code space. Sorry, the code space is open. I could send this to anybody and they'd be able to connect to it. Uh, oh, it's password protected. Look at that. That makes sense. So it's just, it's just for me, uh, and this video, but, um, that's cool. So things are working as expected. I can command click into header and then change this to be text six XL. Uh, whoa, that's really big. Uh, it looks like it's just auto saving. I didn't actually save it and then it's just saving it by default. You can see it's compiling at the bottom there. Do you see that? So if I change it, oops, let me just clear the cut. So if I change it here, I don't save. It just automatically saves for me, which, okay, I guess that's fine. But um, yeah, that's really cool. So that was GitHub code spaces. That was really, really cool. Uh, I don't have any need for it, frankly. I don't want to pay for it, truthfully, but it's definitely very cool to see how far technology has come in the short time that I've been in this industry. Uh, who is this for? I don't really know. Who is going to use this? If you have a, if you, if you're coding, I would expect you to have a computer which isn't really a fair assumption to make, but I would expect that. So I'm really curious, what is the market that this is trying to go after? Like who is gonna be using this? Is it those who wanna be able to code in their iPad or on a Chromebook? I don't know. I'm curious where you might think that the product market fit for this could be. It's certainly really cool. I'm sure it was a lot of fun to actually build this product. It sounds like a lot of fun, but to know who's actually gonna use the product, I don't know. It's cool though. Very, very cool. Very impressive. That's my channel. Nope. That's my episode. And uh, hopefully you enjoyed it. And I have new videos just like this every week. So if you do enjoy it, please become a subscriber. With that, I'll say goodbye and stay happy. Stay good.